Everyone has a place in history. It can be for great things, not so great things, and even everyday things. What if you did something really great, something you believed in, something you died for? And a hundred years later, someone else questioned whether or not you did it. My name is Gwen, and my family's roots lie deep within Texas history, and this is what happened to one of my ancestors. In 1817, a man by the name of Robbins came to Pecan Point in Texas to scout land for his family. One year later, his widow returned by the name of Rebecca Robbins. She brought with her 12 family members, including six sons. 18 years later, one of her sons bravely died in the Alamo, defending the Alamo. His name was George Robbins. Immediately following the destruction of the Alamo, George Robbins' name, minus his first name, was on the rolls of defenders for the Alamo. But today, in 2011, March 6th, his name is no longer on those lists. In the 1930s, a graduate student by the name of Amelia Williams did her master's thesis titled, A Critical Study of the Siege of the Alamo. In it, she states, the various documents indicate, but fail to prove conclusively, that he, George Robbins, was an Alamo victim. Amelia's research also says, George Robbins was killed in service during 1836. She also states that his wife, Cynthia, administered his estate. But when we look back at the evidence, there was no indication, there's no documentation, that George was ever in any other battles, including Goliad or San Jacinto. There's no indication that he ever survived the Alamo. There also seems to be some confusion on to, as to if our George Robbins was the George Robbins that fought in the Alamo, and if he was still alive. This confusion comes from there being another George Robbins, George M. Robbins, who arrived in Texas between the years of 1837 and 1840. But this George Robbins is proved to have been on the tax registers in Arkansas prior to 1837, whereas he was in Texas by 1840. Our George Robbins was in Texas before 1836, as evidenced by his land grant that was given in 1834. Additional information can be found in the McArdle Notebooks from the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. It's a letter that was published July 14, 1876 from Governor Pease to a General William Steele. Governor Pease was a man who personally knew the defenders of the Alamo himself. He has the authority or is a recognized authority to draw a correct list. And this is what he did. He published a muster roll of all the defenders of the Alamo. He states in his letter to General William Steele, I quote, it is known to many persons now living that the monument at the Capitol does not contain the names of all who fell at the Alamo and that many of the names are not correctly spelled. Besides, the Christian names of many are not given. Governor Pease lists Robbins on his list. When we talk about the Alamo and in regards to whether our George Robbins was the one defending it, according to the, te the Telegraph and Texas Register date dated March 24, 1836, Al Robbins from Kentucky was the one who defended the Alamo. This is definitely our George Robbins, as is evidence that our family was indeed from Kentucky. William, who is Rebecca Robbins' oldest son, was married in Wayne County, Kentucky in 1802. George was born in 1804. This would indicate that the family was still in Kentucky in 1802 through 1804. This is just a small body of evidence that we believe proves that our George Robbins died defending the Alamo. 
175 years later, there are many more that deserve to be remembered.